Hello everybody and welcome back to Watch It Baptist Church Online. I'm Eliza speaking to you again this week whilst Mike, our minister, is on sabbatical. Um, we spoke last week about Jonah chapter 1 and this week we're going to be taking a look at Jonah chapter 2. So carrying on that story and seeing what else God has to say to us through this um, really fascinating book. So just to kind of set the scene and start us off like I did last week, I'll just read through the passage so we kind of know what direction we're heading in. So this week I'll read from the NIV. So chapter two. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, in my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas and the current swirled about me all your waves are breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me, the deep surrounded me, seaweed was wrapped around my head, to the roots of the mountains I sank down, the earth beneath barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. I will say salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Okay, so... I think the first thing to acknowledge within this passage is that we just have this incredible prayer of raw vulnerability from Jonah. He laments his situation. He throws out everything at God and says, this is where I've been and it has not been great at all. In fact, it's been really horrible and it's been really hard, but this is where I'm at. And I think that this is really interesting because perhaps when we first think about the Bible, often maybe lament is not the first thing that we think of. But actually, it's not the first time that it features in the Bible. Um, in fact, a large percentage of the Psalms are Psalms of lament, um, a very large percentage of them, I think, over two thirds. Um, and it's not just I, there are other prophetic books that are very lament heavy, such as Habakkuk. Um, but it's not just in the Old Testament either. In fact, even Jesus himself um, lamented, um, especially as his time was coming before he was about to die. He went to the Garden of Gethsemane and he prayed because he did not want what he knew was about to happen to happen to him. And so he prayed deeply and he bargained with God and he, he poured his heart out um, and exclaimed his deepest sorrow at what was about to happen. And so it's really interesting to note that this whole book, this whole chapter really is just one a big prayer of lament of Jonah acknowledging the suffering that he's been through and really expressing that to God. And I think one of the important things to think about in um, this chapter and just with the idea of lament in general is that actually um lament can be used as a form of protest and i think that it's interesting in this chapter how we could almost split it up into three different sections so first of all jonah laments as we've already talked about second of all there's a slight turning point and we could say that perhaps he almost switches into a mindset of praise and worship to god even though he's still in a dark place but we'll look a little bit more of that in a little while and then finally, and this is just in the final verse, in verse 10, God responds. And so I think that it's really interesting that the book has these kind of three evident sections where there is an obvious change in the kind of landscape of what's happening. So moving on to the praise section, I think we get the turning point where we have the but where Jonah says, but you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. And then he goes on with more praise, like we read about earlier. But I think it's really interesting 
because alongside that but and the kind of perhaps more positive outlook that he has he doesn't suddenly abandon the suffering and the pain he doesn't abandon the lament he doesn't say oh but hallelujah it's all okay now he actually says you brought my life up from the pit because i was in the pit and I thought that I was as far away as I could get from you. I thought that you would never be able to hear me. In fact, in the message version, in verse 7, it says, When my life was slipping away, I remembered God, and my prayer got through to you, made it all the way to your holy temple. Which kind of um, emphasises to us the distance that Jonah felt that he had from God. I think that we can see through the structure of this book that as Jonah kind of expresses himself, he really considered himself as good as dead before the fish swallowed him. He really thought that it was the end for him. He was as, as low as he could get. And he's not really much better now, you know. As far as he can see, there is no way out of this, of this situation he's in. At least not within his own control. He is in the belly of the whale, or the very large fish. Um, and as far as he knows, there's no way out for him. Um, and so I think that... This is actually a really interesting chapter of protest of Jonah expressing to God the situation he's been in and calling out the injustice and the pain that he's had and experienced. And also kind of using that more more praise focused mindset as well to kind of prophesy into what he hopes the future will bring he is he is praising god and in a way and saying you brought me out of the pit because he's been swallowed by this whale um and he's but i think also what's really key to acknowledge is that perhaps his praise is not focused on what god has done but more on god's presence i think that we have the really key verse of um you heard me i think um Jonah says, my prayer rose to you, in, to your holy temple. And earlier on in the chapter as well, we have, you listened to my cry. I called for help. I called to the Lord and he answered me. Um, so we have a lot, of, a lot of sections, a lot of moments within the chapter where Jonah acknowledges that God is present with him, that he listens. And I think it's important to note as well that... Um, it doesn't necessarily resolve. I think Jonah's situation, obviously we know from the context of the whole book that, and well, from the end of this chapter, that the whale spits Jonah out and then, um, you know, his life is saved. But, you know, I think that there are times when we really feel like we are at the bottom of the pit. We are as low as we can go. We are at rock bottom in the belly of the whale. And it may feel like things are not going to resolve. And I think the amazing thing is that with God, you know, things don't always have to. We don't always have to, you know, bring in a hallelujah and wow, everything's amazing because it's not always. And I think that the amazing thing about the relationship that we get to have with God is that we get to be really honest with him. And we get to express our deepest hurts and pains and brokenness to him. Um... For example, there's um, one psalm, Psalm 88, which is um, the only psalm within psalms that actually has no resolution. A lot of the psalms, they have lament, but then they have a kind of resolution at the end. But Psalm 88 is just a pure psalm of struggle. Um, and so I think that Jonah is one of these kind of books where um, he has a lot of up and downs. Um and perhaps in this chapter, we can see that too. I think the structure of it um, kind of kind of takes us through Jonah's journey as he sinks deeper and deeper. Um, and perhaps as his mind gets more and more troubled. Um, but I think also as, as he sinks deeper and things get worse, his faith seems to get stronger to a degree because he's able to be more and more honest with God. But also, I think it's important to acknowledge that this is not always the case. Um, of course, like I said, there will be times when we feel we are as low as we can go and perhaps our faith will waver. Um, but like we talked about last week, um, Jonah teaches us that actually that's OK, too, because God is a God of grace far beyond what we could ever imagine. 
um, and he's always there waiting for us when we're ready to return. He's never going to let go of us, even if sometimes we feel like letting go of him. Um, because above all else, he's a God of love, a God of grace and a God of mercy. Um, yeah. I think one of the other really interesting things about this book um, is where in verse two, we get um, we get the section where Jonah says, from deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help and you listened to my cry. Now, interestingly, um, the original Hebrew translates directly to from the, the from the realm of the dead, we get from the womb of Sheol. Now, Sheol meaning death. Um, and the use of the word womb there is really interesting because it perhaps kind of connotes this idea that Jonah's struggle has been turned um, like through his lament. He's kind of coming into a new era, to use a, a phrase of the current day. <laughs> um, he's coming into perhaps a new kind of era of his relationship with God. You know, he's reaching a new place where he's realised that he can be really real and honest with God that he doesn't have to hide. And I think we saw a bit of last week as well, that he realised that vulnerability was something that was really key to deepening his relationship, not only with God, but also with others around him. And we talked about how that is really important for us too. And so I think we're kind of carrying on to talk about that a bit more this week. Um, but yeah, how that kind of really deep pit was actually an opportunity for him, not for everything to get better, but for him to realise how honest he can be with God. Um, I think one of the other things that's really key um, in this to notice, especially about lament, is that grief and lament can actually catalyse change. And this is where the three sections are quite interesting as well, because the final section where we get is that God responds and he spits Jonah around on, on dry land. Well, he doesn't, sorry, the fish does. Um, and so I think right now in the UK alone, there are a lot of heartbreaking events going on around us. Um, and I think a lot of the time it can feel, we can feel really helpless. Um, but I think that that's not something to be scared of. And it's not something to be, like, it's not something that we have to feel scared to express to God. Um, I think that one of the greatest powers that we have with the connection that we have with God in the relationship is to lament these situations that really lay heavy on our hearts. Um, we don't have to just sit by and watch as things fall apart. We can cry out to God. We can ask him where he is, what he's doing, you know, and really throw those questions at him because he's not afraid of our questions. You know, uh, so many biblical characters threw a load of questions at God um, and he's not afraid of them, you know. He, he wants to draw near to us. He wants to listen to us and be present. And it doesn't mean that we'll always get answers to our questions. And it doesn't mean that things will always change in the way that we want them to. But it means that we can have a deeper relationship with him through being really honest with him. Um, I think just for a little kind of example of this, to bring it to kind of modern day. So there's an app called... Um, be Real, which came out, I think, about oh, probably four years ago now, um, three or four years ago. Um, and I resisted getting it for ages because I used to call it Be Fake because I was like, oh, no one really does that. You know, no one really. The idea is that it goes off at a random time of the day and you have two minutes to just take a picture of exactly whatever you're doing in that moment um, so that all your friends can see. And that's it. Um but the app does have a functionality that you can um, take it later if you miss it. So I used to call it be fake and I was like, oh, no one really does that. Um, so, but eventually I got convinced to get it um, this year. And when I first got it, I was really on it. I was really real. I captured, you know, whatever moment I was in immediately. Um, but I think more recently I've become a bit more complacent um, and I've just kind of been a bit like, oh, this is a boring moment. I'll wait till I've got something really good to capture and then I'll take it. Um, and I think our relationship with God can be a bit like that too, where we kind of think, oh, well, I don't really have anything good to say right now. I don't have anything good to talk to God about. So I'll wait till I've got something good to say. And then, you know, I'll, and then I'll talk to him. Then we'll have our conversation. Whereas actually I think vulnerability 
is really key and perhaps if I was more you know more real with my b-reels maybe um my friends would get to see a better insight into my life and maybe get to know me even better and I would get to know them even better too if they were um if they were you know um really real as well um and so I think that our relationship with God is the same you know the more real honest and vulnerable we are with him um, the deeper and deeper our relationship can grow and the closer to him we can feel and I think that that is just the beautiful thing about the connection that we have to God um, with this faith. Um, in addition there's um, a song by a guy called Joshua Luke Smith um, called Silence and in it there's a lyric um, that says um, you've got to face what's hidden won't heal um, and I think it really just speaks into the idea that, um, you know, when we kind of hide things away and we, we don't acknowledge them, um, we kind of can never truly heal or give ourselves the opportunity to better our relationships with those around us and with God because we're not facing, facing up to them. Um, and so I think that it's really important that we're just really vulnerable um, and real with God and that it's really important that we acknowledge lament as a tool to really um, kind of use to protest the injustices we see around us and the struggles um, that we face ourselves, but also um, to really deepen our relationship with God. And in addition, I think that we can find healing through lament. We might not find answers, but I think that we can definitely find healing um because i think that like the song lyric that i just said when things are hidden they can't heal you know it's like if you have a cut and you you just leave it to keep bleeding and you, you kind of almost pretend that it's not there um and you don't bandage it up you don't you know show it to anyone to help you stop it from bleeding it's just gonna keep bleeding and it's gonna do you more harm than good and so i think that the same it is with our kind of emotional and spiritual journey that when we have things that challenge us um it's really important that we don't pretend they're not there but that we actually acknowledge them and i just think that the most beautiful thing about the book of jonah is how honest he is in this chapter with god um and just yeah how far he thought he was from god from his presence and from God ever being able to listen to him, to how close he actually um, felt to God by the end um, of this chapter, um, with his kind of final statement of, you know, um, I with shouts of grateful praise, with sacrifice to you, what I have vowed, I will make good. I will say salvation comes from the Lord. So it's that idea that, you know, by the end of this journey of sinking deeper and deeper and being more and more honest, Jonah has drawn closer to God than perhaps he's ever been, right from the belly of the whale, something he perhaps never saw possible. So I suppose the question is for us, what is it that we need to be lamenting um, in our lives? What is it that we haven't, that we've been hiding away from God and not talking to him about? Are there moments in our lives or times when we've kind of thought that we don't have anything good to say to him and waited for, for a time when we've got something nice to praise him about because we're scared of the questions and scared of the lament? So, like Jonah, Let's pray that we too may have the courage and the strength to be as honest as he was with God about everything that we experience in this life so that we can begin to find healing and go even deeper in our relationship with our incredible God who is never far and is not afraid of our questions or our grief or our pain. Amen.